Good day guys! In this video I will show you how to make a very simple but at the same time very sturdy and rigid metal drill press wise without welding. Stay tuned! I started with this mild steel U-shaped metal beam left over. It is 14 cm in width and 6 cm in the height. Measured and cut 26 cm, which will be the total length of the Ys. Next, trim both sides to lower it from 6 cm to 2.5 cm in height. To get a perfectly straight and level cut, I use this home end attachment for the angle grinder. Few bearings, bolts and square tube converts this angle grinder to a rolling cutting machine. Of course, those cuts could be made by hand, but I wanted to try this jig in this build and it performed extremely well. A single cut left a very nice and perfectly straight edge. I drilled two 38mm holes in both ends and with an angle grinder connected those to form a nice 38mm slot. On both sides I marked, drilled and tapped M10 holes. Here I want to make the vise a bit wider. I used 25 by 25 mm angle iron pieces with drilled representing holes. This will extend the wise bottom, which mostly will be used as a clamping surface. A bit of grinding was needed to make the whole surface perfectly flat. The very last modification on this base was to drill and tap 4 holes in corners for M12 Allen bolts. Did you remember that offcut? I will use it and cut a pair of angle iron pieces for the wise jaws. It not only helped to get the best use of the U-shaped metal beam, but it has a very nice shape also. I managed to get only two pieces from that leftover, so the third one I cut from a regular angle iron found in my metal scrap. Here you could see that angle iron shape differences. The bottom part is thicker than a vertical one, which I like a lot. Two angle iron pieces placed at the base ends will be secured permanently, while the middle one should be moved freely. The process here is the same as in all connection points in this build, drilling a pair of holes in each part to secure it with M12 Allen bolts. This angle iron is way too thin for my planned application, so I make it thicker by adding this 10mm of thickness flat steel strip. As the inner corner has some radius, I need to trim that steel strip bottom respectively to get the perfect fit. Angle iron was drilled and tapped to make mounting points for the reinforcing steel strip. A pair of M10 Allen bolts secure them to one solid piece. Here is the answer why such thickness was needed. In this place I will use an M20 threaded rod as the main Y screw. This is a good example of how to drill holes in strangely shaped metal parts without a drill press wise. A simple support piece made from scrap wood and a clamp did the job. By looking at the thread, it looks like one solid piece. As I like to make stuff not only functional, but at the same time looking neat, I modified both sandwiched parts to a more lightweight and aesthetic look. 
The smaller part gives the idea of how the angle iron should be trimmed too. Now both parts could be fixed permanently. To keep the sliding jaw moving freely along the slot, I will sandwich it with those two metal pieces. After drilling and tapping, all parts could be bolted together. And it slides way better than I expected. Very nice. To keep moving the sliding jaw, I used an M20 threaded rod. Here I have to pay the price of using that nice shape angle iron jaw. The bottom part is too thick for the M20 threaded rod. Not a big deal, I marked and grinded the needed groove with a rotary tool. It took a while, but now the threaded rod fits perfectly. To attach the threaded rod to the moving jaw, but at the same time let him spin freely, I used those two metal strips. First, I marked and grinded a groove on the rod with an angle grinder. Later on, I made a different size U-shape cut in the each metal strip. Here is how it works. The part with the bigger slot will act as a spacer between the jaw and the end of the rod. The piece with the smaller slot will hold the threaded rod attached to the moving jaw and also let the rod turn freely, if it makes sense. When the holes were drilled and the parts mounted on the sliding jaw, I didn't like how it looked so made small corrections. This time I modified only those two parts. I wanted to shape them in the same form at one time, so I bolted them together with a pair of allen bolts while cutting and grinding them to the needed shape. Now it looks way better than before. Before attaching a threaded rod to the vise, I need to mount a handle. The perfect candidate is this 12mm diameter stainless steel rod. To join them together, some drilling and grinding were needed. The threaded rod got the hole and the slot in the middle. Meanwhile, the stainless steel handle was shaped to fit in that slot. To keep those two parts together, I used a pin made from a nail and flattened another nail end. Holds in place and the handle moves freely. Time to mount it into the vise. It spins very freely. Let's try it out on a drill press. This vise has enough holding power to hold not only square parts. The metal strip or round pipe makes no issues too. What I like a lot, that this vise is low profile, wide, quite heavy, and it could be used for all kinds of applications around the workshop. For example, I cut this metal strip without clamping the vise onto the workbench. During the cut, the vise moved just a hair, which saves me time instead of clamping it. Yes, 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 I'm hearing you shouting, why make such thing if you could buy it for a decent price? Well, the reason is the same as with all other handmade tools. You use what you have, make it to fit your specific needs, including shape, size, and technical characteristics, and what is most important, enjoy by building it. 
I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and till the next time, bye.